Hey y'all! A few weeks ago, I started a series called Great Horror You Don't Know, which eventually evolved into the title Great Obscure Horror, because I was doing this on Twitter and you have to like save words on Twitter. Incidentally, if you're curious about my Twitter feed, it's Sandy of Cthulhu, just like the YouTube channel. Uh, on this uh, Great Obscure Horror, I've been releasing entries in it a couple times a week, sometimes more. Um, we're up to enough now that I thought I'd do a video in investigating them. Now, the idea behind these is that these are horror things, a lot of them are movies, not all, that are rare, that most people don't know about, haven't heard about, can't find. And in fact, it's sort of hard to find weird things like this unless you know the name ahead of time, because you can't just Google really good horror movies because it will just give you the last 10 years of crappy Hollywood garbage that are not exciting, right? So this I think will be useful because it's a horror that's not so easy to find. Sorry, it's easy to find. It's not so easy to, um, to look up. And so I'm helping you here. I'm here for you. So the first one, Terrified Acrados. 2017. This is a film from Argentina. It starts out really strong. It never stops. It never explains itself. Now, one of the flaws of Hollywood scriptwriters, at least for horror, is that what they love to do is they tell you what they're going to show you, and then they show you, and then they tell you what they just showed you. And that way you're left completely knowing what went on. Now, maybe this is good in an action movie or a uh, romantic comedy, though I have my doubts. But in a horror movie, you want some of the unknown, some of the, like what's going on, some of the mystery there. And this movie leaves you that mystery without doing it in a confusing or frustrating way. It's like, oh, there's bad things, you know? So also, uh, as a bonus, the protagonists are basically Call of Cthulhu investigators, you know, paranormal guys. Um, it's also good because unlike many horror movies, it is not ruined after you see it once. I've seen it twice so far, enjoyed it just as much the second time. Very solid, very good. So, Great Obscure Horror 2, The Spider Labyrinth. This is a difficult to find Italian movie about an evil cult. It's actually before the, the fall of the Soviet Union, which is interesting. The protagonist goes from New York to Budapest and he gets pulled into the web of intrigue of the cult and this evil. Um, I love movies about cults. This has a really great cult and uh, all kinds of things are going on and, you, and eventually you see, it's not called Spider Labyrinth because there's spiders. I mean, there's like one spider in the movie, I admit, but it's not a very major scene. It doesn't menace anybody. Um, but it's like the web the cult spins that so you can't escape. It's nice. Great Obscure Horror 3, At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul. Well, if you're from Brazil, you probably already know this guy. This is Coffin Joe. He basically did, you know, he's the Brazilian horror guy. So Coffin Joe, I don't know his real name, Zeta Caixão is what they call him in the show. And he actually has those long fingernails and he made up this horror icon that's very gothic. You know, it's, 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 um, it's, it's got uh, skulls and graveyards and guys screaming at how much they hate God. And Coffin Joe is, is is an undertaker, and he's a powerful, dangerous guy, and he's he's an atheist, and one of the horrible things is how much he hates God. And his crimes, he murders people, he rapes the, the, a, a woman, he, um, he eats meat on a feast day, so you can tell he's really bad. And just his crimes go on and on, and eventually he gets his comeuppance, and it's, if you like old kind of gothic-y things, it's very satisfying in that regard, but it's also really gruesome, surprisingly gruesome for a move, for a black and white movie from the 60s that looks like one of the old Universal movies in a sense, but then like there's gore and you're like, wow, it's kind of uh, sets us in cognitive dissonance there. Great Obscure Horror 4, Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, The Initiation. Now I am not a fan of the Silent Night, Deadly Night series, okay? I mean, the first one's okay for a slasher movie. The second one has one funny scene and then the rest is like footage from the first. And the third is just weird, but the fourth is even weirder. It was directed by Brian Yuzna. Now, Brian Yuzna was the producer for Reanimator, for From Beyond. Uh, he directed Dagon, I believe. And he's done a lot of great Lovecraft stuff. This is, and so Silent Dead Light 4, it's, so the, the original slasher movie is about a crazy killer who dresses up like Santa and then kills people. You know, whatever, right? The Silent Dead Light 4 is about um, a women's empowerment pagan cult that is celebrating the solstice, not 
Christmas. It's got Clint Howard in it. It's got giant insects. It's got all these weird cultic things. And it's nothing like any other entry in that whole series. I would say, Jess, that if you aren't particularly interested in crappy slasher movies, skip all of Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, except for number four. Um, you may also want to see number five just because it has a really twisted ending. But uh, but number four, for sure. If you're, if you're fans of uh, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which doesn't have Michael Myers in it and doesn't have like a slasher, and it's an interesting horror movie, this is another movie kind of in that vein. And nothing to do with the rest of the series, just bugs and witches and death by various means, and it's, it's cool. Okay, Great Obscure Horror 5, Amicus! So Amicus is not a movie. It's an entire movie company. So I really like anthologies, horror anthologies, <coughs> and short horrors. And one of the things <laughs> about horror that's quite true is that in general, a horror short story is scarier than a really long novel. So this is true in movies too, I think, sometimes. A movie is hard to keep be scared the whole movie while you're going through it. Um, now, Amicus made a lot of films, but the reputation today is because of the terrific horror anthologies that they put out, which forms this amazing body of evidence that is that even the bad ones have something good in them. You know, they're all fun to watch. Several of the stories in this were scripted by Robert Block. Uh, Lovecraft's protege who eventually wrote Psycho. And two of these, Vault of Horror and Tales from the Crypt, are based on the old EC horror comics from the 1950s. Actually, the last two I mentioned on this scroll, The Uncanny and The Monster Club, they were done after Amicus went under and went bankrupt, as happens to film companies. But they were done by the original owner of Amicus after he went back to the US. Now, while Amicus is a British company and sadly was under the, the watchful eye of the wicked British um, Censorship Bureau, Amicus was owned by Americans and mostly scripted by Americans from American plot lines. But the actors are incredible. They got Peter Cushing, Patrick McGee, Christopher Lee, Herbert Lom, Donald Sutherland, Tom Baker, Terry Thomas, John Pertwee, Joan Collins, Burgess Meredith, Vincent Price, and on and on. Uh, Horror icons of amazing power in stories so short they give a real punch. You sit down to watch a, a, a session of uh, From Beyond the Grave and uh, 20 minutes you're done with a whole little story. You can keep going and see all of them of course, but yeah, these are fabulous. So strongly recommend uh, anything by Amicus. Number six, Sanitarium. So moving away from movies, this was 1988, and this is a graphic adventure. It's on Steam. I am not the world's biggest fan of storylines for games. Famously, the storyline for the original Doom was two sentences, and I wrote it. I wrote a longer one. I can't parrot it now. Parrot says, who needs a storyline? You know, so, but the storyline in, in uh, Sanitarium even held my interest. The controls are kind of clunky for today's audience, but it's available on Steam. It's interesting. The storyline is just as good as it ever was. I loved it back in the day. There it is. On to number seven, Goya's Black Paintings. So Francisco Goya lived in a house for a while in Spain, of course. And while he was there, he painted 14 unsettling images on the walls. They are sadly removed from the house. They're now in the, I guess, more accessible Prado Museum. You can see them online too. Man, they hit hard. Everyone's seen Saturn eating his children. That's one of them. But the other things are often also strong. For some reason, the drowning dog painting really gets me. Maybe because to me, yellow and bleak open spaces figure prominently in my nightmares. So Goya's black paintings, they aren't black in color, you understand. They're black in tone. Going back to movies for number eight, The Hypnotic Eye. This is a dark cruel film from 1960, which feature, features acid, disfigurement, cruelty, terror. One woman is hypnotized into thinking her stove is her sink, and she washes her hair and sets it on fire. It's really sort of horrible material. I loved it. Also, normally, I have a huge crush on Allison Hayes, who's in this movie, but man alive, this is a very different Allison Hayes. So uh, if I'd only ever see her in this, I wouldn't have a crush on her. 
Great Obscure Horror number nine, The Great God Pan. This is a novel from the 1890s by Arthur Machen. It's still effective today. Starts out with they do a scientific experiment to cause a woman to see the other world beyond our own. The woman, when it ends, is hopelessly mentally damaged, but later she gives birth to a daughter. Over the rest of the story, the heroes are trying to track down the now adult daughter, Helen Vaughn, and she leaves a trail of destruction behind her. Uh, when Helen's a child, she's seen playing with a strange naked man, probably not human. Her childhood playmates tend to go permanently feeble-minded, or they get raped, or they vanish forever. She eventually marries. Her husband becomes a degraded vagrant. Then she starts seducing men one after the other, and each time her victim commits suicide. This is all semi off stream. You see, the, you see the wreckage of Helen's life as the main guys are trying to hunt her down. Finally, they track her down and they confront her and then the final horror happens. I love Arthur Machen. Lovecraft loved Arthur Machen. I guess we can't really call the novel Lovecraftian because it's written before Lovecraft, but we can at least agree that Lovecraft channeled parts of Arthur Machen in his tales. I definitely see elements of the great god Pan in his tale, The Thing at the Doorstep. Number 10, V. Okay, so V is the only horror movie made in the Soviet Union during its entire existence. I've said, I mentioned before in some of my videos that totalitarians hate horror for some reason, um, and Russia was no exception. Um, it, they, they managed to squeeze one out of Russia. Um, and V is, the, I think it, V got, got, got under the, got past the censor because it's a story by Gogol and it is ostensibly a fairy tale, but it's a creepy fairy tale with people being ridden by witches and corpses flying around and these awful creatures coming out in the uh, in the chapel this guy has to spend three nights in the uh in the chapel alone with the corpse of a woman that was that loved him or was engaged to him or something and now I hear I don't remember you'll you'll understand when you see it and then the things each night something terrible happens because if he screams or panics his soul is lost forever he can't do that it's actually it's a bet that he stays there but uh, the third night they really bring out the stuff and V V is the name of the, of the final monster so there are 10 tales or images ideas that I'm hoping you're not familiar with. I bet even the most well-versed of you haven't experienced them all. And if you have, then all I can say is I owe you a drink next time we see each other. Just tell me.